The most widely used relation between porosity and permeability is the cosani karman relation. At first sight it looks strange and complicated, but as you will learn in this video, you can actually derive it from first principles. Sort of. Let us take a look. First of all we take a look at a cylinder, radius r and length l. And then we know the Poisson flow, velocity field u is purely in the z direction and v depends on r. Then we uh, can compute uh, v of r in terms of pressure drop, it's the Poisson flow, this is prefactor, and there's a capital R squared minus small r squared over here, we have our parabolic velocity profile. And then we can compute our average velocity delta p times r squared divided by a times mu times l. Okay, that is for a cylindrical called tube. We will sort of generalize this cylindrical tube as follows. Uh, first of all, we are going to introduce the hydraulic radius, rh, uh, which is the uh, void volume divided by the wetted surface. Well, this has the uh, units of a length. So it basically uh, expresses uh, the, the um, amount of space for the water to flow divided by the surfa surface it has to wet. We can compute it explicitly for a cylinder, of course, because the uh, uh, void volume uh, for a cylinder equals pi r squared, the area times the length, that's uh, our void volume, and the wetted surface is the surface area of the cylinder, so that's 2 pi r times L. So for a cylinder you can compute this hydraulic radius, it is uh, r over 2, or your, uh, uh, your the radius of your cylinder equals twice your hydraulic radius. And now we can express our average velocity v uh, also in terms of this hydraulic radius, just by substituting r equals 2rh over there, and then you get for the cylinder that your average velocity is proportional to rh squared with some prefactors. And now, what's the idea of a uh, cosani karman You are going to generalize this. You assume that this relation, which strictly speaking only holds if you have flow through a cylinder, that this holds if you have some flow through a porous medium in general. So you, uh, your uh, average velocity is proportional to your hydraulic radius squared with the same prefactor in general. That's of course a very strong assumption. Uh, then what's the plan? Uh, we are going to express permeability in terms of Rh via the Rc. That's kind of straightforward. Uh, then we are going to express our hydraulic radius uh, in terms of porosity and grain radius Rg. We're going to assume that our porous medium uh, consists of grains, of spherical grains of radius Rg, R of the grain. So again, a strong assumption. And then we are going to combine all of this, and that's the, uh, some algebra. So that's what I meant with the some kind of derivation. There are some very strong assumptions behind here, but it gives uh, reasonably uh, accurate results. So as engineer, we are happy. So. What's the idea? We have uh, all kinds of spherical particles put together. Uh, then we can, uh, uh, that will be our porous medium, so we have some associated por porosity phi, and we will have some associated hydraulic radius Rh, because we can still compute this quotient over here. That will be our hydraulic radius. Then we uh, have some uh, interstitial velocity v inside the porous medium and our Darcy uh, velocity u, uh, which is our volumetric velocity. And of course, this Darcy uh, velocity is much smaller than the interstitial one. Uh, we have to correct for the porosity to express them in terms of each other. So u Darcy equals v times the interstitial velocity v. Okay, there we go. First assumption. So we assumed. Let's go back. Uh, that this equation here holds in general also for this whole setup of spherical particles put together. 
So we assume that this uh, average V is proportional to R hydraulic radius squared. And we have, of course, a relation uh, U dash C equals phi times V average. So you can express the C velocity in terms of your hydraulic radius squared and your velocity phi. So here's a big assumption. Then Darcy's law, which is uh, well established, uh, U dash C equals K of mu times pressure difference divided by L. So if you combine these two, uh, you get uh, your, your perme permeability on the left hand side and some hydraulic radius and phi on the right hand side. You can solve for your permeability because a lot of drops out. So your mu drops out and your delta P over L drops out. So you are left with phi times hydraulic radius squared over 2. Now, only thing we have to do is now to compute our hydro hydraulic radius for the general porous medium of spheres, and then we are done. So, how is that done? We use the following trick. So, hydraulic radius is void volume divided by wetted surface. Divide by total volume uh, above and uh, below. Uh, and then you get the expression over here. And why do we do that? Well, because then in the numerator we get V void over V total, which is another factor of phi porosity. So, only thing left to compute is the wetted surface divided by total volume, if you have all the spheres. So, how are we going to estimate that one? Now, we use the following trick. We take one unit cell in which one square is. Uh, and then we have some, uh, our unit cell has a V total around this one grain of radius Rg. Then we can compute the wetted surface, which is the surface of the sphere, for pi Rg squared. And we can, of course, compute the volume of our grain for a third pi R grain cubed. Now, uh, this one grain uh, occupies a certain amount of space, the remaining part is void space. The space occupied is 1 minus phi times the total space. Uh, phi times phi total is the empty space, so 1 minus phi times phi total is the occupied space. So this 1 minus phi times phi total has to be the volume of our grain, the occupied space. So then we can solve our for our phi total. Uh, so that's 4 third pi r grain cubed divided by 1 minus phi. And now we are able to compute our uh, hydraulic radius because we have uh, both our wetted surface and we have our V total. So we compute the quotient as wetted divided by V total. That's the mess over here. Uh, and we have our uh, hydraulic radius. Uh, Fortunately, it simplifies a lot. And you are, are left with this expression over here. And you see it's indeed proportional to a distance. Our hydraulic radius is grain radius times some factor involving porosities. And then we are basically done. Because now we can wrap up. We had from the step over here that k equals phi times hydraulic radius squared over 2. And so over here, we have computed our hydraulic radius over here in terms of grain and uh, radius and porosities. Put it in over here. And then uh, simplify a bit, put all the phi's together. We get the expression over here. So your permeability here is proportional to phi cubed and it has a factor Rg squared. Now, this is often expressed in terms of grain diameter. Well, that's fine, of course. Grain diameter is, is 2 times Rg. And then you'll get the equation here for your uh, permeability in terms of porosity and grain diameter. Now, there have been a lot of assumptions here. So next step is, of course, to measure and to see whether this formula actually works, whether it fits. Uh, compute your porosity, compute your permeability, and see whether this formula indeed holds. And it does so rather well. Just this factor 1 over 72 has to be adjusted a bit. So experimentally it has determined that this factor has to be changed, usually to some, something like 1 over 150. So uh, that's the uh, expression which is often used to express permeability in terms of porosity.